Today we have Jackson Mitchell. Before I, I send it over to you, this is a guy that was a senior when I was a junior. He was a team captain on the football team. Uh, I played outside linebacker. You played inside linebacker. I think we were on the same side, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we were both on the strong side because we're strong. Yes. And uh, man, you graduated, and then and then I came in a year after you and was a senior as well. And so really, it's about to be your 11 year reunion, but it's been 10 years since we've been together. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really excited for this this interview and, and really I just wanna dive in and, and figure out where you've been and how life's been. And so, man, thank you for, for coming on today. Appreciate the opportunity to be here, bro. It's, uh, it's an honor. I think the number one holdback is number one, people's beliefs mm -hmm. in themselves. And number, one, number two is the, the finances. Mm -hmm. Like I have a steady job. Mm -hmm. I'm getting paid twice a month, Mm -hmm. the 15th and the first and I'm surviving mm -hmm. and it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know that this isn't for me. Yeah. How do, like, how can I talk myself into or come to a place to where I can actually jump to where I'm going to attract what's for me? Well, I think if you believe that the best you can do is be comfortable in that steady paying job, then that's what you're gonna do. But if you believe that outside of that steady paying job, there's opportunity for you to make whatever dollar amount is right for you, if you actually believe that, if you think, well, yeah, I get paid a uh, hundred grand and that's guaranteed every year and like that's comfortable, it allows me to do what I wanna do, like, uh, like I don't know if I can do that without this guaranteed income, well then you probably can't. But if you think, yeah, this is a blessing, I have a stable salary, I know it's coming in twice a month, but I believe that on my own doing what I view as my passion or this business or whatever the thing is that you wanna to do to make money, if you believe that you can make more money doing that, then you will. So and it might not happen yeah. overnight. Right. But, but there's some there's some faith involved, the belief that you're sure. talking about. And so for me, like belief has been the number one key in my healing, my view of myself, my belief in myself, my belief in my purpose, my belief in my mission, what it is. And that takes a lot of faith. And I think that there's it's really hard to have the belief that you need in the midst of a ton of fear, because I I, I think fear is the number one hold back. It is in every area. So how did you come to truly believe in you? And, and what is it that you believe in? Is it, do you believe in you? Do you believe in God? Do you believe like, yeah, what shaped these beliefs? Yeah. So first and foremost, my faith, my faith is foundational to all of this, you know, without God, none of it's possible. Um, you know, I believe that God gave us all a purpose and we have that purpose, but it's also up to us to put in the work to, to live that purpose out. Faith without works is dead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I think God gave me incredible gifts and talents, and I feel like I've identified them, but that doesn't mean it's not a little scary to like go run and use them. I, I can't remember the whole quote because it's pretty long, but C.S. Lewis has a quote from Mere Christianity, and it's all about how, you know, to live beneath what God has called you to do, the gifts that God's given you, to live without showing those to the world is cowardly. And it's not uh, conceded to be this big version of you that God intended you to be. That's like good. He gave you the gifts because he wants you to use them to serve the kingdom. So for you to just push those down and not like live out your full potential and calling is, is very selfish. And it's really just trying to be comfortable. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. And I think it's crazy because I think in today's culture to be humble is to be comfortable. Yeah. And to be arrogant is to try and be your best self, yeah. which is backwards. <laughs> the issue, though, too, with that is that it's it's humility and arrogance in the eyes of Billy Joe from down the road. Like, right. Who, who is telling you that this behavior is arrogant? Who's telling you that you're humble? Like, who are you looking to for that affirmation? Yep. And again, it's like, and we've talked about this, you've talked about this, like, you're created in God's image, and 
living in that way is that's a big, powerful thing. Yes. And, you know, again, if you're upset and worried about what, you know, person A thinks about you, then you're worried about the wrong stuff. Um, but I do think fear is a huge rate limiter. And I've experienced in my own life, like, you know, fear of what somebody might think, fear of failure, fear of abandonment, fear, I mean, fear of so many different things, but fear is just like, yeah, part of my language was fuck fear. Like, yeah. You know, like, no. I mean, I think one thing that's incredibly important for people is like, you know, like, I think most people are aware of the fact or aware of why they may behave in certain ways. And there are also resources like therapy or whatever else to help you gain more awareness as to why you operate in certain ways. But once you have the awareness of why you're behaving the way that you are, you also have the opportunity to then go make change and not continue to just live in the repetitive cycle of like fear or, you know, generational trauma that's, you know, shown itself through again, generation and generation and generation and family, like we all have the opportunity to change. And like something yeah. I talk about all the time is like every moment of every day, you have an opportunity to make a choice. Right. And life is about making choices and owning those choices. And it's like whatever the reality is that you're experiencing, it's a result of the choices you've made in the past. And then right now you have a choice to make in this moment that's going to dictate the reality you experience in your future. And so, you know, if people act like they don't have a say in their life and what they're experiencing, then they're, they just have it backwards. Yeah. And, and going back to fear, I think all of us experience fear for sure. I think the, the thing that screws us is when we accept a foundation of fear, our life is ruled by our fear. Mm -hmm. When, you're right, when your life is ruled by faith and you believe and you know you got it and you know that God's got you and you know that you're talented and you know that you've been put here for a reason and you know that God's going to give you the connections that you need and you know that uh, everything is going to work out the way it's supposed to work out, mm -hmm. those things attract because your beliefs create your reality. And... The craziest thing, though, is is I lived for years. I mean, from when you knew me mm -hmm. to 15 months ago with the foundation of fear. Mm -hmm. every, every decision that I made was based on numbing that fear. Mm -hmm. Now, I would do things that, you know, were uncomfortable, and but there was no true change. Right. And the only way to create a new foundation of faith is to truly face the fear. So the fear sucks, but the fear can also be a gift mm -hmm. because it's an indicator in you that this is what I need to face. Right. Like this darkness in me, Carl Jung calls it the shadow, like this shadow in me, I must face. This past, these traumas, these things that I've gone through, why do I think this way? My subconscious, all of it. Mm -hmm. If I face this, then maybe just maybe, God, the universe, whatever, will shift my foundation to faith. Yeah. And that's how it worked out in me. Mm -hmm. He used those fears to then mold me into a man of faith. I believe. I know that I can do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not scared. I don't care what people think. What did that look like in you? Yeah. Um... Like, when, when did you face your fear? Like, because you already had a good head on your shoulders. You had right. the logic. Right. But something had to have been missing. Yeah, I think really the way that I lived my life for a long time, you know, even with faith being present and, like, having the mentality of, you know, no limits, the walker mentality, like, this has existed for a long time. Yep. Talked about it for a long time. But... I also think for a long time I was living to fit into this box that I believed other people expected me to fit into. It wasn't even necessarily that somebody told me I should do something or shouldn't do something else, but it was like, this is the vision of myself that I have from the lens of person A, B, and C, who, who it is is irrelevant, but like from anyone outside of myself, this is what I should be doing. And so that's what I have to do to be 
successful or valuable or enough. And I think I lived that way for a really long time. And I think it ties back to just like emotional suppression and, and a little bit of people pleasing too, where it's like, I just got to fit in this box to where they're going to view me as like good. Yeah. And, and motives and intentions are so important. Yeah. Like those, you might be, look, you might look great from the outside. You might look like you're doing everything, but what are your motives? Right. Are you living like that's living from a deficit and I, I'm not enough. I have to yeah. prove. Yeah. yeah. And, and dude, I mean, so I went to therapy for this intensive counseling retreat. Um, and it was like three days from nine to five every day, just like going up into the attic, bringing all the shit down, unpacking it, talking through it, making sense of it all, which was an incredibly powerful experience. But one of the key things that I said to my therapist during that, uh, that few days was being physically fit does not mean you're healthy. Mm. And that's been something that is super important and prominent for me to say and to be aware of because I can run all the miles and lift all the weights and like look good with the shirt off and appear like, yeah, this dude's got to figure it out. Like when I was working in corporate America, it was like, oh my gosh, like Jackson has these great jobs. Like he's, he's doing everything great. Like I wow. definitely felt that. Yeah. That, that young man is successful. Amazing. But I felt like shit for a long time. Yeah. And like my mind specifically, it was like, all right, like, and I, like, that's what I'm saying. Like I had the awareness, like I knew that there was a massive disconnect and that, you know, everybody has different versions of success, but success for me, I was like, this is not what success feels like. This is not what living a great life feels like. Sure. I look okay in the mirror, but everything else feels incredibly off. And you know, it's wild. And, you know, I don't think anything's a coincidence, so I'm not going to say this is a coincidence, but you know, in the past, every single year when I would get my physical and get my blood work done, like certain levels would be off with my liver or this or that. And I'll have these different like minor health, quote unquote, issues, just little things that were off that really wouldn't make sense for somebody in my physical shape. Like I went to my physical this year and everything was leveled. Wow. And I truly believe it's a result of healing yes. like healing emotional and, healing yeah yeah and it's crazy how you know there's a book by an incredible psychologist called the body keeps score and the body does bro like if you're if you're suppressing um if you're living with trauma that you haven't faced and healed if you're um keeping secrets and hiding parts of yourself from people close to you and living if you're truly just not being yourself and living outside of who you are i i believe that your body is going to respond in a way that is telling you like, yo, my guy, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta make some changes. Cause yep. like I'm breaking down as a result. And I, I experienced it firsthand. I mean, I felt like shit, like, but you know, I'm grateful because, and the way my psychologist broke it down was like, we have this child version of ourselves, uh, a teenage version of ourselves and an adult version of ourselves. And what's the ideal scenario is for the adult to be in the driver's seat, the teenager to be in the passenger seat and the kid to be in the back. And for me to look at them and be like, yo, don't worry. You're safe. I got you. Uh, I understand you. And like, I see you, I love you, but like, I got you and we're good. That's the ideal scenario. And you know, you have the choice to decide who else you want to let in that vehicle. But those three, along with God, of course, and in, in this context for me, um, those are the people that are the most important in the whip and like, you know, I'm swaying in the whip. Yeah. Would you say healing for you? And I want to wrap this up here in a second, but healing for you was healing little you. Is that, is that what brought you the healing that you needed? Without question. Yeah. Can you explain what that looked like? Yeah. So for me, um, the, the way that the things that I experienced as a child and as a teenager manifested into my adult life. And I want to say this too, like everyone's trauma is different. Yep. And there's no, there's no value in comparing traumas. I'm literally taking that line from my coach. Um, there's no value in comparing traumas because no matter what you experience, all of these things show up in the same ways. So for me, like with what I specifically experienced, like I had a fear of abandonment. I uh, tied a lot of my value up into my body. I 
was horrified to potentially have conflict, to say anything that might make somebody upset with me. Um, and then there was one other thing that showed up, but really more than anything, I think the most prominent ones were like a fear of conflict, a fear of abandonment, and then tying way too much of my value up into my body. What that was rooted in specifically was like, I was a chubby little kid, and so I always had to play on the line, which is like such a funny, small thing, but it, it held weight throughout the duration of my life. And then um, the first girl I ever had a crush on, I told her, you know, I like you, whatever. She's like, well, I like your best friend. Boom, rejection, fear yep. of rejection, yep. fear of abandonment, fear of opening up because you're gonna tell somebody how you feel, and then they're gonna say, nah. So yep. like those things that are so small and subtle, then they have the opportunity to manifest in your adult life. And it just really manifested in like emotional suppression and inability to have like some tough conversations. And so, you know, going through therapy, gaining awareness for those things, then I had the opportunity to make changes and I started making changes and it was hard and uncomfortable. And that's why, you know, facing your fears, there's so much value in it, right? Because we suffer so much more in our head than in reality a lot of times. And it's like, I would face these difficult things or these things that I viewed as scary. And then on the other side of that fear was growth for me, growth for another person involved. Like my relationships got better. Yep. Like everything got better when I stopped just operating from that child mindset of like, this is what's required for me to be safe. And the brain's number one function is to keep us safe. Yep. So that's why so many of us will limit ourselves from experiencing more, whether it's financial abundance, relationship abundance, career, in all these areas, like we're wired to be safe. Yep. And our brain yes. also can't differentiate the difference between a saber toothed tiger attack and uh, you know, an approaching project deadline at work. Yes. So like your fears, whether huge or small in the eyes of any normal human being, like your brain's responding to them the same way. Um, so I don't even know if I answered the question. I just no, kind of got to ranting, did. but no, like you did. Face, your, face your fears. Um, what would you say to our classmates? Yeah. You know, they're watching this if they are, or even anyone else watching this. I'm sure other people are watching this, but you're really our classmates too. You know, we've all experienced life together. We all went to high school. We went to college. Some of us didn't. Um, I've had a lot of people reach out that are, are hopeless, mm -hmm. that are going through a hard time. Maybe not even hopeless. Maybe they're, they're comfortable. Yeah. Um, what encouragement do you have for them? Yeah. You know, one thing I always think about um, for myself is just that, like, there's so there's so much growth on the other side of discomfort. And I think of this, you know, cheesy analogy, but it's like when you have a, a young kid who's going through growing pains, like their bones hurt, but they're growing. And it's like, I understand the desire to feel comfortable, but there's so much more when you get a little uncomfortable and push through it. And like we talked about to start this off, it's like, the the abundance mindset and the mindset of like not oh this is happening to me but like this is happening for me and there's value in this and i have the ability to create whatever life i really desire to live like you know hard times are hard but like you're not a prisoner to your circumstance like yep. you have the ability to change your reality you do yep and yeah, there are tools and resources, whether it be coaching or therapy or um, the 12 step program, like there are all these amazing resources, but the number one most important thing is that you make the decision that you want to experience different and make meaningful change in your life. Without you making that decision, without you knowing that you have that ability, none of it's gonna happen. Yes. And that's the walk on yep. mentality. It's like. It's the mindset that there's no limits to what we can accomplish when we believe in ourselves and are willing to do the work to achieve our goals in every category. And it requires the belief and it requires the work. And without the work, the belief doesn't matter. And without the belief, the work's not gonna happen. Yes. So understand that you're in the driver's seat. Yeah, and I, I wanna add on to that. You, you can't hate yourself to change. You have to love yourself to change, accept yourself to change. and. 
here's here's the thing that I've I've come to understand is that at a young age, a lot of our realities were shaped by people that were living in a false reality. And the true reality is this, is that you're enough, a great life is ahead of you, there's hope for you, and you can do anything that you set your mind to. The thing is, is do you believe that? Are you gonna buy in to the true reality or are you gonna continue to live in a reality that isn't real? Um, I urge you to take the uncomfortable step, and this is, this is the action step for this. Jackson is doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, mentorship. How can they find you? What does that look like? And I, I wanna send people to you yeah. um, if that's a possibility. I appreciate it, bro, yeah. Um, so my website is www.walkonmentality.co, not .com, .co. Uh, my email is jackson at walkonmentality.co, and I, would love more than anything to help anybody who is looking to make meaningful change in their life and they're serious about it. Um, so email me, go to my website. There's a form on there that you can fill out. You can also learn more about me there on the site. Um, on Instagram, it's Jackson R. Mitchell and the walk on mentality. Um, and yeah, like I said, like my biggest desire for my clients is that they have the burning desire to make change in their life. Cause in my experience, like nothing changed until I wanted to change. And, you know, like JB just said, like you got to love yourself first and you got to be wanting or you have to be willing and desire to make that change. Um, so get at me. If that's you, hit up Jackson. Thank you, guys. Thank you.